The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Power Trading Hour with your host, David White. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, David White. And welcome all to another excellent edition of the Power Trading Hour. And uh, as always, doesn't matter where you're at or where I'm at, but generally I'm up here. But it matters when we come together at the appointed time of 2 p.m. The following takes place between 2 p.m. and 3 p.m. I view 2 p.m. as sacrosanct. Anyway, uh, we're off 21 on the S&P cash. Uh, Dow is down 86. Uh, Nasdaq's off 49, and crude oil's off five bucks, if you can believe it at all. We've got gold up four bucks, which is actually pretty good. Didn't see a lot of people sell off into it. Probably the big news uh, as we start off today is just how much money is going into the bond market. Um, let's take a look up here. We've got a kind of a little bit of a uh, Gartley pattern that's finishing up here today. And right back up to that gap at about 120. And you you got to think with inflation and everything else, who in the world, who are these people? Uh, you got to think that... Uh, you know, who, not the World Health Organization, who are these people that are throwing money at the bond market? Well, you back up 119.74 on May 27th, 26 million shares. Uh, we've had a little bit of an ABC kind of uh, coming up here today, back at what is going to be very strong uh, resistance levels. But uh, that's kind of it. You may basically overshot the Gartley pattern just a hair. Just that much. Let's see. Like I said, it's kind of a small one. So not as powerful as the larger ones, at least in my opinion. Um, but you did kind of break out into that today. Volume's fairly light. On Friday, you had 15.7 million shares. Today, you have about under 10. So not a lot of people getting real brave, uh, but certainly off the lows for funds, most of the money has been targeted in the bond market, which seems insane. Uh, certainly the money going into equities has been uh, light in the ETFs or for the fund flows over the last 30 days. And probably the other big news uh, was that we had uh, Thursday night, we had the bi-monthly uh, short numbers come out. And, you know, I people hadn't really, from what I'd seen, hadn't really been extremely bearish at the lows. What I did see, though, was some numbers that were rather shocking in the amount of uh, – folks that were getting short near the lows, which happens a great deal, on a lot of stocks. Not necessarily the big stocks, but a lot of stocks that looked like they were in trouble. Uh, they went knee deep in uh, as we approached the lows and, and bounced around down there off that 3750 level on the S&P cash. So there were a lot of short positions, uh, a little bit more than I thought from looking at the rest of the data. Um, and again, you can tell that people are shorting at least some stocks heavily during the day. Uh, it's much harder to know whether or not those folks went home or not short those positions because you only know one thing on a given day, and that is that a position was opened up as a short position. It does not ever tell you that the short position was taken off, at least through the daily data. So we've got that going for us. Yeah, there's something going on out here in the TLT. And I saw the numbers. I wish I would have kept the article 
Um, I was looking at it this morning, and then the dogs decided they had to go outside. And by the time you come back, you forget about it. But I was reading the article, and I wanted to say $19 billion into the ETFs in the last 30 days, something like that. It was fairly large compared for fund inflows for things like the TLT. So, well, uh, kind of uh, to give you a little bit of uh, reference from the godfather, uh, time to go to the mattresses. But uh, certainly we'll keep an eye on that. Uh, now we've got uh, what has really been kind of generally thought as fund buying, which should start around now. It's not uncommon to see weakness on fund buying days early in the day, only to see a lot of the market uh, or money come into the market late in the days. Uh, last two days of the month, uh, first three days, generally what they'll do is mark it up uh, to some astronomical level. And it, depending on the year, the time, you, you, fund buying is generally good, even in bear markets for three quarters of a percent on average higher uh, over the time frame compared to uh, in a bull market where it's maybe one and a half percent. But it's almost always bullish. It's very tough, even in bear markets, to, to see that uh, the funds quit, uh, the, the operators on the street quit uh, selling in the last few days, mark it all up, let the stocks go higher, and then the 401k money, otherwise known as the smucks, get the worst prices of the month. But uh, not always, but it happens a great deal. Anyway, uh, looking at the TLT and whether or not we've topped out here today, um, we were talking on Friday about whether or not gold has really changed out here. Um, one of the things that, that does tend to uh, go on with uh, gold and some other things like uh, energy is if the market's going sideways, they, it tends to do extremely well. Uh, this goes back to Jim Sinclair uh, and I think an interview around 2000 where he brought up just how many times when markets go dull uh, that you'll find either everybody getting involved in gold or crude. Uh, that we're off uh, crude so heavily today is fairly interesting. Uh, anyway, uh, gold today, I like I said, I, it was more interesting to me whether or not gold was higher today and could hold price or whether everybody decided that they were hiding out in gold over the weekend and we're going to get uh, ready to uh, do it, uh, to, uh, to sell off. So actually, fairly interesting movement, uh, although on light volume, which connotes that you could come back to maybe something like 163 and find uh, that uh, level holding. Um, I don't think it, it's a monster bull market yet in gold, but uh, the action in uh, bonds or the money flows in bonds really makes me think that on a pullback out here you may find uh, more people going after some gold uh, 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 <laughs> strictly business it was never never personal we'll be back in a minute inflation, where your purchasing power is eroded, there's no better place to protect your hard-earned money than in gold. Vista Gold's flagship asset is the Mount Todd Gold Project in the Northern Territory of Australia. This is Australia's largest undeveloped gold project. We are talking a world-class gold project in a Tier 1 mining district. This is a large-scale, low-cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction. Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd Feasibility Study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve in a 16 year mine life. All of this combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits. This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de-risk partner, ready development stage gold project. Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ.
Are you grinding in the market, but seeing little to no return? Or are you a successful trader, simply looking to make your job a little easier? Learn to take the path of least resistance with David White's powerful trading newsletter. David White is an accomplished trader whose deep understanding of technology and the markets allows him to consistently find and share winning trades. Support and resistance define the ranges in which stocks trade. By understanding these trading ranges, David White is able to find the path of least resistance. David White's trading newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, is delivered daily before the markets open to make every trading day an easy win. Visit TFNN.com today and subscribe to David White's Ultimate Trading Newsletter for $119 a month. And try all of our newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Take the path of least resistance at TFNN, educating investors. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. now toll free at 1-877-927-6648 internationally at 727-873-7618 as we return into a market already in progress over most of TFNN. Uh, as I said, uh, not uncommon to start seeing a little bit of that juice, uh, monthly juice, come in uh, about this time each day. Sometimes it's uh, once they open the floodgates uh, after a weekend, uh, people start chasing it um, at the fun level. But yeah, you, you got to kind of have to worry about, or not worry about, but you have to kind of uh, know that these traders are always trying to get the best deal. And, of course, everything is rigged against them if they're in an ETF, um, with them being forced to buy around this time. But uh, you never know. Anyway, uh, first question of the day, and then we'll get into some other stuff going on, is... Uh, is this sustainable in Boeing? Well, as long as high uh, energy prices are there, uh, the desire to get some of these newer planes that are far more energy efficient uh, on the road, so to speak, I'll mix my metaphors, uh, in the sky is there. But you certainly have a beautiful double gap. Came down on 40 million shares back on the 27th of April. Uh, it's not uh, quite that... Uh, juicy up here but you do have almost 15 million shares i know a ton of people uh are short boeing uh but uh yeah it may pull back a little bit i maybe be a little bit much out here today i think a little bit of short squeezing going on during this fun buying season okay yeah uh, it's nice that it gapped over that area and it's uh, rather amazing how many times you have a gap at the same area. And in this case, you have three gaps, actually. You've got the gap from that uh, down from that uh, to, to, to March or April 20th. Huh. Then if you go back even much further, this gap, uh, let me see, I went the wrong way. Uh, this gap goes back uh, to a gap that's still open back on November 9th of 2020. So 
pretty interesting to see all these dis different gaps uh, come together, including today's gap. Okay, so eh, let's do a little history, and then we'll move on with the rest of the show. And it's all just a little bit of history repeating. On this day in 1981, MTV, presumably standing for music television, although it does not any longer, launches on cable, as most people know. After the introduction sequence, the first video played was Video Killed the Radio Star by the Buggles. Where are they now? However, a bit of trivia is the second song played was You Better Run by Pat Benatar, who's in trouble now because she will not sing a couple of her songs at concerts and people get mad and throw things and apparently get in fights. That's over the last week or so of news. MTV had an immediate impact on the music industry. It was an iconic symbol of the technology-driven 1980s. And, of course, now, MTV, no music. No music television. So should it be NMTV, no music? T I think it should. I think they should change their... Uh, address okay so we went through the first part of my sit rep out here today which was fun buying uh one of the things that uh everybody is kind of whistling past the graveyard again on is uh google's uh loss uh late friday um on antitrust uh uh, litigation and you're kind of just in here about halfway I think it came out at about 4.30 maybe came out earlier I didn't see it till later Friday night uh, what is so important about this is that uh, the judge didn't just uh, pick apart part of a uh, lawsuit uh, but he just said uh, we're throwing out all your objections whatsoever Mr. Google and we're going to let uh, the other folks that you've pounded into submission in a variety of ways, uh, i.e., in this case, Rumble, although there's a handful of other lawsuits uh, doing the same thing. Um, Rumble was extremely good at documenting uh, by putting videos on their web service and showing views that probably weren't correct, the amount of views, and showing how Google... Uh, his algorithms automatically would adapt and make sure that no one from their Google website actually went to Rumble. They, no matter what, went back to YouTube. Using a position of dominance like that, almost always horrifically bad when it comes to court because there's a big law called the Sherman Antitrust Act of 1889. And, uh, well... To this point, no one's really been able to get into Google because uh, for the same reason, if you uh, get screwed over by the stock market and you try to go after the Americans or the uh, uh, New York or NASDAQ stock exchange, you're going to get a handful of nothing. And that is the judges of New York protect uh, Wall Street. And same thing with Google. Uh, the judges of the Ninth Circuit some kind of, sometimes called the Ninth, ninth Circus because uh, they get reversed about 80% of the time. Uh, protect those folks. Well, yeah, an Obama judge, uh, he also said kind of a uh, bridge too far. You like that mixed metaphor? And uh, is allowing them to move forward on all fronts. What this means is that uh, a posing counsel will be able to get through and go through a great deal, including the double top secret um, recipe for the algorithm. Uh, and uh, they'll be able to see how it changed over time. Right now, uh, the first court watchers who were pretty surprised that uh, the judge uh, allowed it to go forward in totalitary well, generally, they'll like strip 80% out of a court case, and they'll get down just to what it was. But uh, this is pretty amazing because uh, uh, with this ruling, Google's not going to have a big leg to stand on on saying that you can't look at this or that or the other. Judge really kind of said, uh, have at it, boys. 
go in there and start digging around. Now, more than likely, the uh, uh, results, or I mean the uh, information they get will be sealed, so we won't see it for a while. But when it goes to court, it would come out in open court because those things can't be kept secret. So there's going to be a huge, huge desire for Google to probably try to settle this before it actually gets into open court and everybody can start spilling the beans on what these guys do. Uh, but more than likely, whatever comes out of this uh, that the opposing counsel gets will probably be turned over to the uh, uh, the uh, Federal Trade Commission, who's already been hot on the tail of these companies. We'll be back in a minute. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my Gold Report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, JDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. As we return, I had to get a drink there. We'll move on. Anyway, uh, the reason I bring that up is I suspect um, of the hundreds and almost thousands of lawsuits against these folks uh, for the great evil that they have done and not been accounted for, uh, it is uh, going to be an issue. Uh, as we said on Friday, one of the things that I thought was most interesting uh, was that uh, Zuckerberg has sold his house in San Francisco, and he's leaving Dodge uh, to uh, head off uh, to uh, Hawaii. So I don't think it's very uh, – probably not making it very long before he's uh, 
also gone. I'm looking for the announcement that he's going to be just the chairman. And someone else is going to be the CEO soon enough. And he's going to be one of the first to ha actually have one of those big deals where uh, if he would have killed somebody, including the president, put in maximum security jail and all, they still couldn't have removed him as uh, CEO of the company. He had that kind of power uh, when the uh, company uh, went uh, and IPO'd that he had that in the uh, documents of the company. There's one reason why he would leave. Uh, that's because it's too painful. Uh, but uh, he is busy selling a lot of his properties. I think the writing is on the wall uh, for him uh, going to probably president, hanging out in Hawaii, and letting somebody else roast in front of Congress over the next few years. Um, volume uh, back on uh, July 28th. Uh, still was fairly strong compared to the previous low. Not getting much of a bounce out of here, and of course didn't do well on earnings either. But uh, these guys have kind of the same thing. I think we're. Uh, it takes a long time for things to get through courts, but Meta has its own share of antitrust issues, um, and uh, some of these again, for the most part, uh, the California courts have kept. Uh, companies uh, and uh, what, uh, Washington uh, Washington and Oregon courts for technology have kept uh, most of these lawsuits that would probably sail through any of the other 49 states uh, at bay. Those are starting to go federal uh, and get uh, traction outside in individual courts. Uh, so uh, the fun time is over. Uh they used to call the uh, first uh, four years of World War II uh, in the uh, submarine service the happy times because after that, three-fourths of everybody that went to sea did not come back. Uh, I think uh, the happy times for a lot of these companies and getting away with literally almost murder are probably over. 877-927-6648. Uh, to, to what else do we have out here? Let's go ahead and start checking the email. Uh, you can email me at path at tfnn.com. Uh, and, of course, uh, call me at 877-927-6648. And put a message in the den. Okay. So let's go back to the usual suspects today and just take a little bit of a move. Apple held up a little bit better than I thought it should on Friday, but it's pulling back a little bit today. Um he had this nice gap up on earnings. It never made its whisper numbers. That's almost always bad for Apple. Um, you did get the gap, but my guess is it's going to fill this. Uh, that takes you back to about 57, uh, 5750, 157.50, excuse me. And you've got that. Um, you do have a, a kind of a nice low on a lighter volume, uh, back to the 132 and 129 lows, uh, that June 16th low was a false breakdown. Now you've moved back higher, but it's probably, at least in the short term, probably in a trading range. I'm going to say around the low 150s uh, to 163, probably through the rest of the summer, unless something really big starts to happen. Okay. Question from Ron on the IBB. We get back to that. Um, yeah, <laughs> what are you saying out here talking about uh, going dead? I don't think that there's anything in the IBB for us right now. There's no movement higher or lower. So I don't think that there's anything for us to see here. Please move along. Uh, Mike asked about uh, Planeteer finally getting going here. Uh, again, you know, if we're going to see kind of a recession, we're going to see uh, a uh, maybe a depression if they continue on with the uh, ridiculous policies uh, that they set forth that caused a lot of this problem. Um, 
you look for companies that are going to get cash from, and uh, as Tom O'Brien likes to say, those green checks. Uh, this is a company that is uh, fairly dependent not on the kindness of strangers, but uh, the government. And they've got some decent contracts. I don't know if they get more of them. But uh, look for the PEs on these companies like Booz Hamilton uh, and others like Planeteer uh, to start creeping up uh, as uh, their contracts are fairly good and long and uh, in a uh, recession slash depression, if they can get it going um, for some unknown reason, they want to destroy the economy. Well, what can you say? Uh but uh, you don't have a lot of juice right here, but ten and a half bucks. I think the whole market's kind of set up to maybe be a little flat into September. We talked about the TLT at the high uh, start of the show. Uh, question about uh, Tesla. Uh, do I see anything else going on here? TSLR. Uh, just a lot of short positions. Uh, Tesla kind of perennially short, if I can actually type it correct T-S-L-A uh, here kind of a uh, you're back up to what should be fairly strong resistance 935 36 today was the high this goes back into the gap down of May 5th that had 30 million on the way down you got 31 on the way up again kind of tough there wasn't a lot of energy on the way up up here uh, but generally this thing does not uh, end up um uh, topping out until the shorts give up. So I'll be interested to watch the the uh, news, the short seller news from FINRA tonight, and that would be it. Huh, okay. Uh, question about Chanos and his short on DLR. Generally, when he's doing this, he's thinking a year or two down the line. So I don't know if it matters much on Digital Realty Trust. Uh, I think he was in there right around 130. Uh, maybe he's a little better off than that, but uh, he's pretty good at figuring out the books on these. Uh, probably the biggest uh, thing uh, that we didn't really talk much about is Intel. It did retest the lows uh, on Thursday. I mean, on Friday, 125 million into the 40 million. A lot of people saying that the bottom is in. Well, um, I don't think so. I think uh, these guys um, had one great product um, that no one else had. They found a way to toss it in the ash heap of history. We'll be back in a minute. TFNN has been your trusted source of analysis for bonds, metals, stocks, commodities, and options for years. And we are happy to announce that we are bringing that same caliber of analysis for the Forex market. Teddy Kekstad has 30 plus years of experience in Forex trading, commodity risk management, Forex hedging, volatility, and so much more. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex report every Monday morning with elite coverage of all major currency pairs, including the DXY, Euro Dollar, Pound Dollar, Aussie Dollar, dollar yen, dollar Swiss franc, and so much more. Teddy will recommend specific trades when the market presents them and provide updates throughout the week when warranted. For the month of July, inaugural members to the Tiger Forex Report will receive 25% off the monthly subscription for as long as they're subscribed. Just use promo code TEDDY25 to lock in the added savings. This offer is good only for the month of July, so do not miss your opportunity to save on the Tiger Forex Report. TFNN, educating investors. Technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. 
TFNN, educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. As we're back, uh, to, to, we're to looking at a few ones out here. We looked at Boeing already, up 6%, just probably too many shorts. You had to know that the plane was going to get re certified uh, for uh, delivery soon enough. So I don't know if that's really a surprise. I just think too many people asleep at the wheel going on. Got a question about Microsoft and Intel. Uh, of course, they used to call them Wintel uh, about a billion and a half years ago. Uh, but uh, yeah, I don't exaggerate. So uh, you gap down on earnings on Intel or uh, and just really interesting to see um, a lot of what they had is fairly good products that they were able to drive into the dirt. They spun off their, or they are going to write off their MEM resistor technology. And everybody kind of knows what memory is. And they know that it's kind of like uh, a thumb drive, which is kind of slow. Uh, and sometimes it's a little faster, like a, a SSD drive. Uh, but, uh, you know, they, the SSD drives or the thumb drives, they wear out fairly easily. Anyway, they came up with uh, a MEM resistor technology. So did uh, HP and so did uh, Micron. Uh, but uh, guess what? Uh, Intel drove everybody away from it uh, with uh, policies where they were really, really going to be the only ones to be able to sell it. And so... Uh, Microsoft, uh, the big uh, houses that could actually use it for data storage uh, and big uh, clouds, uh, high availability systems. Some bought it and they made some decent money out of it, but eventually they all gave up on it. So they're writing it off for $500 million worth of uh, product laying on the shelves. This is something that people had been looking for since 1960s. Uh, and uh, they decided uh, to find a way to uh, steal victory out of the well to feel steal uh, defeat out of the jaws of victory with coming out with a neat product. But it does show that you can't go alone anymore uh, as Intel tried to do it with Micron and uh, demand what the market's going to do. Uh, over the last two years, maybe five years, what has it been, 2016, uh, since they got rid of the last, what I'm going to call last good CEO they had uh, for uh, reasons that ended up being more uh, political infighting uh, than reality. No one was complaining about what this guy had done 10 years ago. Uh, and now you got a bunch of hacks, uh, one after the other, that continue to drive Intel into the ground. But uh, guess what? These guys had a technology no one else did. They found a way to screw around, not update it, and make it so proprietary that no one else would use it. And now it's all written off. Uh, 
I have some of it, and it's the best memory you can buy for a hard drive. Um, it doesn't wear out. It doesn't. Uh, it's kind of like the Terminator. It can't be reasoned with. You can't talk it out of trying to kill it. It does one thing, and it just works, and it works incredibly fast. It's a was at uh, the beginning a thousand times faster, but again because they wouldn't do anything uh, to uh, make it uh, adapted worldwide, uh, the regular memory just kept uh, increasing, getting better and cheaper. Uh, meanwhile, this stuff kind of uh, never really went much of anywhere. I feel sad for uh, good technology that does not find a home, but uh, the lessons of Sony and Panasonic are legendary with their VHS machines uh, back in uh, the 1980s. And, of course, uh, Sony had a far better product, uh, but uh, Panasonic uh, and Mishusta, I had a much better idea to license the technology out to other folks and make sure it was the winning standard, and it did end up being that way. So kind of a nice lesson in technology. It is rarely uh, that you can uh, drive a uh, market by itself when it becomes big enough. Uh, probably 10 years ago, maybe Intel, Intel could have gotten away with this with uh, AMD on the ropes. Uh, today, eh, it just does not, does not fly. Okay, go back and check back into CCJ. Down about 3% today. Uh, we've been waiting for this to, to, uh, uh, to uh, uh, pull back a little bit. We did get into this uh, big gap down from May, what is that, May, June 10th. With uh, 5.7 million shares, you got into it with some decent volume, uh, but again, kind of the general market conditions. I would love for this to pull back to 24 bucks, and on very light volume, I suspect uh, that would be the start of its run this fall up to probably the 28th, and probably one of the few companies you can get into uh, that uh, is going to do well. Um, shooting down Pelosi's plane or not by the Chinese, but uh, you never know. Kamiko, of course, a Canadian company, uh, and probably wouldn't be under, eh, maybe it would be under uh, restrictions, but uh, you have to wonder about what those Chinese are up to, uh, the Chinese communists, that is. A uh, question about the SMHs out here on the heels uh, of not being able to type correctly, SMH. He said, dyslexia is a cure for found. The Chai Coms. I'm a Cold War warrior. Back from those Cold War days. Uh, Bajolista. Of course, back then it was all about uh, learning Russian. Uh, the SMHs are right back up to this uh, resistance level uh, where it started heading down um, on the uh, 6th of June. Uh, this had about 5 million shares. Uh, you were into it with about 3.2 on Friday today, about 2.4. Again, I don't have any problem playing these, but uh, with the headline risk from China, probably kind of toppy. Doesn't mean it can't go higher. Uh, but you also have the risk of being able to wake up in the morning and seeing this down 30 or 40 points. So I'm not a big fan of playing this unless you're using options and you've limited your risk way out in front. You never know when uh, those old chai comms are going to decide to get froggy. Um, let's take a look at the XME real quick. Um, certainly you're back up like a lot of these uh, up at resistance levels. Uh, energy is not so bad. Uh, in the mining business. Uh, you are up against two different gaps, though, uh, a handful of days apart. Um, you needed about five and a half million shares. On Friday, you had three, a little over three. Today, you got about two. Hey, could you still get a little bit more out of this? You could. Um, but uh, you got a good low in down here to, between that 42... Uh, 76 and 3983 but uh, now you're probably at the top end of this trading list 
We'll be back in a minute. Vista Gold owns and operates the largest undeveloped gold project in Australia, the Mount Todd Gold Project. Vista Gold just completed their feasibility study, resulting in a 7 million ounce gold reserve. Vista Gold has all major permits approved and has retained CIBC capital market assistance in evaluating alternatives and in completing an accretive transaction. Vista Gold trades on the NYSE American and TSX under the ticker symbol VGZ. Vista Gold, executing a strategy to create shareholder value. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Catch Tom O'Brien, professional trader and educator, founder of TFNN, also a special guest on CNBC. Tom will bisect and dissect the markets. The Tom O'Brien Show, next on TFNN. As we come back, the real first day of fun buying seems to be rather quiet. With just a couple of minutes left in the show, maybe they'll come in a little later. We did get down to almost 4,100 on the S&P cash. Now we're down just uh, 12 points at 1118. Is that right? Yeah, about 1117. So we're gonna we're gonna look at it. There's always money coming in, at least some, almost always, unless there's a giant outflow. But uh, the question is. Is it going to be enough to drive the market any higher? I think there are probably going to few, be a few stocks that have news like Boeing or something like that. They're going to make uh, the uh, short sellers at least blink for a day or two. But uh, we'll see if uh, that. We're probably going to be over by Wednesday, if not Thursday morning. So I don't see a lot of reasons to think that we've topped out and to go short. Uh, but at the same time, uh, there doesn't seem to be a lot of indications that there's much uh, higher coming our way. Probably somewhere in a 20 or 30 point range, I suspect. Now, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe all the money will come in at once. Maybe it'll come in at the end of today. 
But uh, so far, you know, you would expect to see maybe a lot more in the way of uh, volume. Uh, it's okay with about 7.2 billion shares uh, for summertime trading, but it isn't anything that says we're going to 4,400 anytime soon. Much more likely this volume signals a lot of stocks uh, that are best in a trading range and maybe topping out over the next few days. We've got some more earnings uh, this week uh, in the S&P, I think 150 stocks, but generally they're the ones with smaller market caps. We've been through the uh, the big thing last week. Now it's a little uh, of the also rands in the S&P 500. So we might get some movement from that, but eh, looks to me like uh, eh, maybe just uh, holding it up here for the next few days is the path. Not when you can, not when you have to. We'll see you tomorrow. Building wealth trading in the stock market seems